welcome back to Closing Bell on the 2nd of October 2020. And it's a Friday, finally. So today's news is all about Donald Trump having pos tested positive for COVID-19. However, Joe Biden has been tested negative, him and his wife, because they were concerned when they're going up the stage. And the other facts that was really, really interesting today is we have been told that Donald Trump's announcement of his COVID-19 has been his most liked post today. The internet can be brutal. <laughs> anyway, so the NASDAQ is dropping under 2% just now. We are about 45 minutes from closing bell on the New York Stock Exchange. Dow has recovered up to back to normality again. So this is telling us something different. We were expecting the opposite, but somehow market as usual is unpredictable. The tax are still on a sell-off and the Dow has recovered. So I think there's still a lot of uncertainty. Lots of option called trading and there are option called trading for over the weekend till next week. So it's something that we have to keep watching. But one strategy that's coming out really different this time on the market fall is a lot of traders are hanging on to the stocks, not massive selling, but they're hedging, protecting the portfolio by shorting oil. Yes, oil has dropped more than 4 to 5% today. So on multiple brokers, you can see 3x oil shorting or 3x uh, oil companies like Shell, BP, and lots of people are hedging. Rather than keep cash or buy on the dip, they are hedging by their portfolio by shorting oil, making the gains, and hopefully jump back in on a cheaper stock. This is what everyone's doing. Loads of them going on eToro, on Twitter. That's what I've been reading. A lot of people shorting out. However, the funny thing is gold is not moving. Like I said this afternoon, gold, as it stands for the last six weeks, is not safe haven. Gold has been dropping from 2,200 to 1,800, back up to 1,900. But a lot of people are still calling that gold might still fall. Gold is no longer a safe haven, even though it's going opposite the dollars. So people still like the CHF, Swiss franc, and the... Uh, Japanese yen, as you can see, Japanese yen open on the positive today. Okay, next two big stocks I'd like to speak about is Tesla. Tesla announced a record of 139,000 cars delivered in Q3. Boom, they're on their way to the 500,000 car mark and they're doing really, really well. Stock price is falling, uh, obviously, because of the situation in NASDAQ and tech, tech stocks and Tesla going down, people are just taking profit. And the last one, which I think it's very important, is Twilio. I can pronounce Twilio now. Twilio has gone up, jumped by 12%. They have been advanced, explaining that their forecast estimate will be bitten. They have shared the sales. They've been, they've been doing really, really well. So why do I say it's good? Is I don't own Twilio. I've sold, I've taken profit off Twilio. But when Twilio says they're doing well, it is an indication of e-commerce stock. It's an indication of stay-at-home stocks doing really well. Remember, Twilio is all about chatbots, all about helping e-commerce platform, helping uh, internet platforms on chatbots, on help sites. And with these tools doing well, it means the likes of Shopify, the likes of Amazon, the likes of Etsy, all these smaller business scales should be doing well. If the chatbots are doing well, other avenues will be doing well. So to me, Twilio is a good indicator from work. No, sorry. Twilio is a really good indicator for stay-at-home stocks. And oppositely, Zoom is an excellent indicator for work-at-home stocks. So this is my tip for you guys today. I'm going to close Friday's closing bell, telling everybody to have a very good weekend, rest well, and I hope to see you guys soon. Weekend is for me. It's not just rest, but also produce content for you guys. Please do like and subscribe and follow me. See you guys later. Bye.